Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Bob Burns and Faye Bainter in The Arkansas Traveler with Gene Parker and Dickie Moore. Lux presents Hollywood. It's the story of a wandering printer, the play we bring you tonight, of the small town into which he drifts and the part he plays in its heartaches, its happiness, its romance. In it, you'll hear Bob Burns, Faye Bainter, Gene Parker, and Dickie Moore, with music under the direction of Louis Silvers, while our special guest is Hugh Park, editor of Bob Burns' own hometown newspaper, the Van Buren Press Argus. Before I introduce our producer, Mr. DeMille, let me tell you what Barbara Stanwyck, famous screen star, has to say about Lux Toilet Soap. She says, Lux Toilet Soap has an active lather that removes cosmetics thoroughly. I always use this easy care. It helps to keep skin soft and smooth, the way a woman's skin should be. Take this famous star's advice. Use gentle Lux toilet soap regularly. Lovely women everywhere do. And now, the producer of the Lux Radio Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The two greatest authorities in the world on the subject of relativity are Albert Einstein and Bob Burns. Bob may know nothing about mathematics, but he certainly knows his relatives. From Grandpa Snazzy to Cousin Boo, those fascinating folks from the Ozarks, whose amazing adventures have made Mr. Burns America's favorite reporter. Mr. Einstein relaxes from relativity on the violin, and Bob seeks escape by bellowing through a cast-iron bugle whose bray has caused lovelorn mules to kick up their heels from Van Buren to Vancouver. As in his current picture, Bob tonight plays the title role in The Arkansas Traveler. When the World War came along, Bob lent his services to the Marines and his bazooka on one occasion to General Pershing. Then our footsore hero was in turn a longshoreman on the docks of New Orleans, a streetcar conductor and silver-polished salesman in Virginia, a waiter on a coastwise steamer, a cowhand on an Oklahoma range, an aspiring engineer in Salt Lake City, and a businessman in Little Rock. Now proudly exhibited by the moguls of movies and microphones, Bob Burns stars next for Paramount in I'm from Missouri, and for us tonight as Traveler. Playing the same roles that they filled with such distinction on the screen are Faye Bainter, Jean Parker, and Dickie Moore. Miss Bainter turns her superb abilities to the part of Mrs. Martha Allen. Jean Parker, her refreshing charm and beauty, to the girl called Judy. And Dickie Moore plays Benny. Now on to the Ozarks, as the Lux Radio Theater presents Bob Burns and Faye Bainter in The Arkansas Traveler with Jean Parker and Dickie Moore. <laughs> The outskirts of a small town somewhere in the Middle West. In the blue light of early morning, a freight train lumbers slowly toward the tiny station. In a boxcar, his head resting on a rolled-up coat, lies a hobo, a journeyman printer, known to his fellow knights of the road as the Arkansas Traveler. Along the top of the train comes a brakeman. Reaching the traveler's car, he swings down and calls through the open door. Hey, Traveler. Come on, Traveler, wake up, wake up. Oh, yeah, uh, what? Come on, wake up, Traveler. You'll be sleeping past your destination. Oh, thanks, Freddy. You boys sure give lots of service on this road. You want me to signal Joe to bring her to a stop? No, just get him to slow down a bit. If any of my hobo friends ever saw me stepping off a standing freight, they'd think I'd gone so. <laughs> How's things in Arkansas? Oh, same as every place else. The rich is still in the gravy and the poor is still in the majority. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, so long, traveler. So long, Freddy. Say, Freddy, where's the office of that daily record in this town? Two blocks up the main street. But that ain't no newspaper for a good printer like you. Want to ride on a spell further? No, thanks. Got a little business to do here. Well, I'll see you soon. So long, traveler. <laughs> Good luck! Morning, Sonny. Morning. What are you doing there, Sonny? What do you mean?
you think I'm doing? I'm setting type. Looks to me more like you're upsetting it. Don't disturb me, please. We gotta get out our paper. Upside down? It is not upside down. Litters, listen. Citizens, on this suspicious occasion... Oh, sure, it reads all right now, but if you print it end up, you'll be reading it upended. Oh, gosh. You know, son, maybe that's why so many newspapers mean one thing and print another. Let me set that up for you now, all right? All right. Fine. What's your name? Oh, I get called lots of things, but most of my friends call me Traveler. What's your name? Benjamin Franklin Allen, but most folks call me Benny. All right, Benny. Say, you're sitting that type and you're not even looking. You don't have to look if you keep your mind on what you're doing instead of how you're doing it. Benny, I can't seem to find... Oh, how do you do? Howdy, ma'am. I'm Mrs. Allen. His name's Traveler, Mom. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Traveler. Oh, you're a printer. Is he? Just watch him, Mom. Oh, i just showing the young man a few shortcuts. Do you want work? No, ma'am. But uh, I reckon I could conquer myself for a while. I take it you're the editor. Yes. And publisher, too. My pop used to be. Mr. Allen founded the record. We've been trying to carry on. But we've had an awful time keeping printers. Well, I'm no fancy one, but I ain't plum terrible neither, I guess. But I'll try to help out. That's fine. The wages aren't much, of course, but... If now, I, I wish you wouldn't count on me staying too long, ma'am. Why? Don't you think you'll like working here? No, it ain't that, but I just got an urge in me that don't seem to want to stay put. Oh, but I'm sure if you tried... Well, I'll try, ma'am, but there's something inside me that a train whistle just sets into an uproar. Then I just got to get on and ride. Well, I've seen the time it got so strong if there hadn't been no other way to get on the darn thing, I believe I'd have gone so far as to buy a ticket. Why do you know, Miss Allen, it, it... Listen. What is it? There it goes now. Ain't that beautiful? Well, I'm not so sure I know what you mean. Mom, Mom, look, there's Johnny Daniels. Johnny Daniels where? Out in the street. He just passed by the window. Johnny, hey, Johnny. Benny, Benny, don't yell like that. I'll call him. Here he is. Johnny. Oh, hello, Mrs. Allen. Johnny, how are you? Come in for a minute. My goodness, it's nice to see you again. Oh, really, I, I can't stop, Mrs. Allen. I, I just got into town and I... But you look so tired. Let me get you a glass of cold milk. Uh, no, thanks. Uh, I've got to get on onto the house. Well, you can sit down for a minute. After all, you've been away quite a while and... Please, Johnny, I... I want to speak to you. Mrs. Allen, am I too late? Three days too late, John. Your mother died the day before yesterday. Oh, I'm so sorry, Johnny. Did she... Did she suffer much? No. I guess she was tired. She just closed her eyes and went to sleep. Well, I... I'd better get along. Aren't you going to see your father? I didn't come back to see him. Goodbye, Mrs. Allen. There's no use your hurrying away. Judy will be here in a minute. She'll be glad to see you. Well, tell her I said hello. Hello. Thanks, Mrs. Allen. Johnny, wait. You're too tired to drive off so soon. Oh, I wasn't driving. I, I, I came on the train. On the train? But there wasn't any train this morning, only freight. Oh. Goodbye, Mrs. Allen. Mom, what did he mean? Was he riding a freight train? Was that it? Be quiet, Benny. Lots of very nice folks ride freight trains, Benny. Johnny Daniel's father is the mayor of this town. Mayor? Well, now, if my father had ever been mayor of some town, I reckon I'd be awful proud of him. Somehow it strikes me Johnny ain't built that way. Johnny and his father had an argument three years ago. This is the first we've seen of him since. I wish he wouldn't run off that way. It does seem a shame now, don't it? Oh, here's my daughter. Judy, this is Mr. Traveler. He's our new printer. Oh, how do you do? Oh, pretty well, Miss Judy. Judy, Johnny Daniels was just here. I know. I met him outside the market. Oh, did he say where he was going? No, he didn't. I thought maybe you'd ask him. Me? Why? Well, I mean, I... I don't think he ought to be running off again like that. I don't think anyone could have stopped him. Well, maybe not. Oh, Mr. Traveler, this article is... Oh, Mr. Traveler? Where'd he go? Mr. Traveler? He's gone. That's funny. I didn't hear any train whistle. Did you, Judy? Hello, operator. Hello. I want to speak to the town jail, please. Hello, is this the constable? Well, I'll tell you, Constable, there's a young fella named Johnny Daniels on his way out of town right now. And I got a feeling he ought to stay here. Yes, and I think you better get it, go get him now. 
Why? Well, because he stole my watch, that's why. Thank you, Constable. I'll be down to see you a little later. Hello there, son. Constable fix you up nice and comfortable. What are you doing here? Thought you might get lonesome in a great big jail all by yourself. Never mind the funny stuff. What's the idea of getting me locked up in here? You know I never saw your watch. I wish you'd calm down. I'd like to have a talk with you. And what about? What were you running away from? How would you like to mind your own business? Well, I'd like it fine, except it always gives me pains in my head. Now, for instance, I once saw Billy Goat choking himself on a rope. Well, now, you know how Billy Goats are about accepting help. But I said, Bill, if you'll just slack off on that rope, you can butt down what you're tied to. Of course, I did have to get a new seat in my britches, but it's pretty near worth it to see how grateful a goat can be. Now, listen, I don't want to hear any more of it. was Johnny Daniel. Sure, Mr. Collins. Then why did you lock him up? I guess you got company, Johnny. Open that door. Yes, Mr. Collins. Hello, Johnny. I heard you were in trouble, and I hurried right over. Oh, that's nice of you, Mr. Collins. It's been a long time since we've seen you, Johnny. That's right. I see you're still running things in this town. Well, at least enough to take care of this little situation. Now, what are the charges, Constable? Well, now, uh, uh, now th this fellow here says Johnny stole his watch. Well, who is this man? I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I mean... But you uh, took his word, huh? How do you know he ever had a watch? Oh, gosh, Mr. Collins, I gotta believe somebody or I never would get to make any arrests. Well, you let the boy out. Oh, sure, Mr. Collins. Come on, Johnny. Put on your coat and I'll drive you home. Thanks. But I'm not going home. Well, you, uh, you want to get out of here, don't you? Not if I have to thank you for it, Mr. Collins. I don't want any favors that I'll have to pay back someday. Why, I'm not only thinking of you, I'm thinking of your father and how he'll feel about your being in jail. It's about time one of us was here, me or him or you. I don't have to take that from you, Johnny. I'm only trying to help you. I don't want any help from anybody. All right, have it your own way. Oh, Mr. Collins, I, I'm sorry about locking him up that way, but... Well, you're sure in a spot, boy. You don't want to stay in jail to spite me and you won't get out to spite him. Must have been a he-horse fight to make a fella like you carry a grudge for three years. What do you know about it? Oh, I've been sort of nosing around. Say, you remember that fella Goliath in the Bible? Yeah, and Jack the Giant Killer, too. Come to think of it, just about the same thing. Say, did you ever wonder why they never gave them fellas last names, like Goliath Collins, for instance? Because they were like dogs, I guess. Talking about dogs, you know, I often think what a lot of trouble a dog with a tin can on his tail could save himself if he'd just turn around and yank it off instead of running away from it. Well, so long for a while, I got to go back to Miss Allen and get the morning edition ready. Uh, wait a minute. You, uh, need any help? What? Why, you got charges against you. How are you going to get out? Well, uh, you could use your influence. Thought you didn't want no favors from nobody. <laughs> You're a nobody. But I, you ain't aiming to run off, are you? Oh, oh no. No, I, uh, I wouldn't like to have you lose that watch again. I wouldn't fool around with that line of type machine, Johnny. It takes an expert mechanic to fix that thing. I'll have one here this afternoon. Don't you worry about Johnny, Mr. Traveler. He can fix anything. Sure. Once he took my dad's watch apart in a bed and put it together blindfolded. Yeah, well, maybe you can fix my watch sometime. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, say, tell Miss Allen what you tell me about that footprint. Oh, I, I said it should have been hooked up with a motor in the first place. Well, there's one upstairs on the washing machine. Oh, the washing machine? Okay, thanks. Wait, Johnny, Judy's using it now. She's... Oh. 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 Uh, morning, Judy. Why, good morning. I didn't know you were here. No? Well, I... I came back last night with Traveler. Oh. Do you want something? Well, uh, it can wait. You're always so mysterious. I don't mean to be. One minute you're gone, the next minute you're back, and you don't say why. Well, uh, I'm back this time because... Well, because I changed my mind about going away. And you went away three years ago because you changed your mind about staying here. I had to go away then, Judy. Without telling anybody? I, I was afraid you wouldn't understand. But you could have told me. After all, Johnny, we grew up together. We were always friends. Even if we did have an awful lot of fights. <laughs> yes, we, we did have, didn't we? 
Listen, do you remember the time I made you a Prince Charming outfit for the school masquerade? And you let me wait? <laughs> and there I was all dressed up as Cinderella, and you never even showed up. Oh, well, uh, that was on account of that nail. What nail? The nail on your front gate. Caught my costume. Maybe you can be a prince without any seat in your pants, but, well, I don't see how you could be very charming. So I went home. Well, it's nice. Ten years later to learn the reason. I was always thinking I'd never speak to you again. Say, what are you doing with that washing machine? Just connecting the motor. That's what I came up for. Well, thanks. Wait a minute. Where are you going with that? Oh, I need it downstairs. Well, I need it here for my washing. But we've got to get out a batch of circulars. And I've got to get out a batch of washing. Oh, just like a woman, worrying about washing when we need the motor to run a business. Johnny Daniels, you haven't changed one little bit. You're just impossible as you always were. Well, whoever said I wanted to change? Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Mr. Dean, you've always run an ad in our paper. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Dean. Yes, I'm still here. But, Mr. Dean, you can't withdraw your ad now. The cuts have already been made and... Oh, very well. Another cancellation, Miss Allen? Yes, I don't understand it. That's the seventh cancellation we've had today. You'll have to knock down that setup again, Mr. Traveler. Yes, ma'am. Seems like business in this town has turned awful sick all of a sudden. What's doing it? They can't all have gone crazy. Come in, Matt. Good morning, Mrs. Allen. Oh, good morning, Mr. Collins. Matt gave me a lift in his new car, Mother. That's how I'm back so soon. Sit down, Matt. Thanks. Judy, did you see Johnny? No, why? All of our advertisements have been canceled. Canceled? Why, they can't do that. Why, I never heard of such a thing. That's funny. What's that? I mean, it's funny you didn't hear about it, Mr. Collins, being sort of partners with most of them. That is, I've seen your name on most of the stores around town. Oh, this is our new printer, Mr. Traveler. Traveler? I've seen you someplace. I don't know where, unless it was in jail. Yeah, maybe it was. Martha, I'm terribly sorry about this. I'll take a couple of pages if it'll help. Matt promised me an ad from the Citizens Committee, Mother. That's nice of you, Matt. Sure is. Only one paper don't make a... One ad don't make a newspaper. Martha, I'd like to talk to you seriously. What about? Oh, of course, Matt. Would you rather go upstairs? Thanks. Too bad you didn't meet Johnny, Miss Judy. Say, hey, where was he supposed to meet me? Down the street, but maybe he couldn't see you in that big car with Matt Collins. Just what do you mean? Oh, nothing. Funny Matt Collins wanting to speak to your mother. You simply can't go on bucking this thing by yourself. I'd have been all right if this slump had... If it wasn't the slump, it'd be something else. You're not a businesswoman, Martha. But this isn't only a business to me. It's more than that, Matt. I understand how you feel. Martha, I want to help you. If I take the record off your hands, you'll have a little money, cash, instead of a lot of worry and bills. I'm sorry to be sentimental about it, but... I just can't sell Ben's paper. But if it fails, then what? If I take it, I'll keep it going. Isn't that a better tribute to Ben's memory? I never thought of that. I suppose you're right. Excuse me, Miss Allen. I know you're awfully busy. I'll be down in a little while. I just want to ask a question about our ad. It'll have to... Did you say our ad? Well, just because everybody else can't afford to take out an ad, no reason why we can't. Don't cost nothing. Oh. Well, I'll talk it over with you later. But I just wanted your okay on the idea of reprinting the front page of the very first issue of the record. With Mr. Allen's picture as a banner like this. Look, we've been here 20 years, and we'll still be here the next time you want to buy a paper. I'm awfully sorry to trouble you, but I sure wish you'd think about it. Well, Martha? Martha? What? Oh, the longer we wait, the harder it's going to be. Let's settle the whole thing now. It is settled, Matt. I'm going to hang on to the record. But how? I don't know. But we'll keep going somehow. In just a few moments, the curtain will rise on the second act of The Arkansas Traveler, starring Bob Burns and Faye Bainter with Gene Parker and Dickie Moore. Meanwhile, during our short intermission, let's look in on Mr. Billings, manager of your corner grocery store. Mr. Billings is talking to his assistant. All right, hurry up, Joe, and finish that window, and then help me unload this crate of canned stuff. 
Gosh, Mr. Billings, here comes Mrs. Smith. Let me wait on her, will you? If you did your work as quick as you notice pretty customers, you might be of more use to me. I'll wait on Mrs. Smith. You finish that window, young man. Good morning, Mr. Billings. Good morning, Mrs. Smith. You're shopping bright and early today? Yes, I'm having my husband's boss to dinner for the first time. I do want it to be a success. Well, can't help but be if you're giving the party. Say, here's a wonderful new canned turtle soup, and my wife says this steamed date pudding with hard sauce is just grand. Thanks, I'll try that soup. And here's the rest of my list. And oh, that reminds me, Joe. Give me some of that Lux soap you're putting in the window. Six cakes. No, make it a dozen. My husband has found out that it makes a grand bath soap. He acts as if he discovered it himself. You know how men are, Mr. Billings. But it was I who told him about it. I use it for my complexion and for the bath, too. I find that there's nothing better. Oh, are these my packages? I've got to hurry. Let me take them out to the car for you, Mrs. Smith. No trouble at all. Be right back, Mr. Billings. Mr. Billings sells lots of Lux toilet soap to charming young women like Mrs. Smith. Charming young women who care for their clear complexions the gentle Lux toilet soap way. They know it's foolish to risk the dullness, tiny blemishes, and large pores that mean unattractive cosmetic skin. They use cosmetics, but remove them thoroughly with Lux Toilet Soap's active lather. Then pores don't become choked with stale cosmetics, dust, and dirt. Skin is left smooth, soft, appealing. Nine out of ten famous screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap. Why don't you try it for face, hands, and bath? Mr. DeMille. We continue with the Arkansas Traveler. Starring Bob Burns and Faye Bainter, with Gene Parker and Dickie Moore. Several days have passed, and the name Martha Allen still stands on the masthead of the daily record. The traveler, who in his own quiet way is responsible for her decision, is trying desperately to make the newspaper pay. Now in the tiny office, he reads a galley proof of the next day's leading advertisement. Look here, Johnny, this is the Citizens Committee ad. Very nice and poetical, too. Now, just listen to this. What changes a town to a city? Improvements, a dam, a lake, fertile farmlands. Citizens, beneficent nature has given us the natural resources to turn our town into a city. Picture a lake where now there's nothing but an arid canyon. Picture estates and home sites dotting its wooded shores. All this will be made possible by the erection of Bear Trap Dam. That's Matt Collins' ad. Reads so smooth, I declare you could almost believe it is true. Huh. Not if you know the facts. Well, ain't some of it true, Johnny? Uh, none of it's true. Not a single word. <laughs> he talks about fertile lands and what the dam will do for the farmers. Well, it won't do a thing. Matt Collins wants to build a power plant, that's all. And he could build a power plant if he had one little thing, a dam. So if the government puts up half and the taxpayers put up the other half and they build a dam where he wants it... And... Say... Hey, what are you doing at that linotype machine? You haven't heard a word I said. You want to see how your argument looks in print? Read that. Who will benefit? The record wants to know. Hey, you mean you're going to print what I just said? Sure, why not? As long as Martha Allen owns this sheet, the citizens are going to know the truth. Look, Ed, the record wants to know. Who will benefit? Bear Trap Dam is a trap for the taxpayers. What is wanted, irrigation or electricity? Johnny Daniels must have wrote that. Good for Johnny. Wonder if it's true. <laughs> true or not, he'll sure get a hiding from his old man. <laughs> Hello, John. Oh. Hello, Father. I didn't expect you'd come down here to see me. Or maybe I did after you read that article on Bear Trap Dam. Now, now, Johnny. I didn't come down here with any chip on my shoulder. I've been thinking things over and... Well, John, I feel we both were a little hasty a few years ago. I'd rather not go back over all that. I'm willing to make allowances for the fact that you were very young. But not too young to discover that my father was taking crooked orders from a crooked man. I don't think you understand politics, John. I understand that kind. Oh, why not? Let's go home. We can talk things over privately there. No, thanks. I'd rather stay here. I'm beginning to like newspaper work. And I'm going to fight Against Matt Collins and against you. I guess there's still no use in trying to talk sense to you, John. But you won't get far around here with that attitude. Good night. Hey, Johnny! Johnny! Supper's ready! Okay, Benny. I'll be right there. Come on, Judy. Hurry up. 
Men want their supper when they've been working hard all day. Ain't that right, Trevor? Of course, women don't do any work. Well, there's some do. And some who just ride around in big automobiles and talk. Now, Benny, Judy was getting ideas for the paper. For Matt Collins? Fine ideas he's got about our paper. What do you want to buy it for, anyway? Only because he wants to help us. Matt doesn't need the record half as much as we need him. Ah, pussy willows. Matt Collins is really interested in this dam, ain't he? And you see, Benny, Mr. Collins would like to have a newspaper so he could educate the townspeople about it. Listen, if Matt Collins wanted a newspaper for any reason, he's got money enough to start one of his own. Now, that's what worries me. You see, I've been figuring... You'd spend your time figuring out your own business instead of butting into other people's affairs. Judy, please. I don't care, Mother. It's about time someone told him off. Ever since he's been here, he's been poking around in our affairs. Nobody asked you for your opinion, Mr. Traveler. You came here to work for us as a printer. That's all you're supposed to do. If you don't like it, why don't you get out? There are plenty of freight trains running out of here every day. Judy! Hey. Oh, Mr. Traveler, I'm very sorry. Gee, she didn't mean a traveler. Well, uh... Will anyone have dessert? No, thanks. I guess I just had mine. <clears throat> Judy? Judy, are you still awake? Judy, come in. Judy, I want to speak to you. If you were mad about that editorial tonight, don't blame the traveler. Well, why did he put it in the paper? Just so he and take a dig at Matt Collins? No, because it's the truth. Your father would have printed it. Judy, you like Matt Collins, don't you? Well, yes, I do. Are you in love with him? I don't see why I couldn't be. He's a real man. There isn't anything you wouldn't give me. At least I could travel, see things, and be someone, and do something with my life. Instead of throwing it away like I did, staying here in a small town? Well, you didn't have to stay in a small town. You knew Father had ability. Should have made him get out of here and helped him to do big things. Maybe today we wouldn't be sitting around worrying how we're going to get by. I guess you're right, Judy. When I married your father, I had ambitions, too. I didn't want to stay here, cooped up in a little town. I knew your father had great ability, and I dreamed of seeing things, living in a big city and having people look at me and say, that's Ben Allen's wife. But your father saw things differently. He felt that his destiny lay here, among the people he knew and loved. He felt that if his voice was strong enough and true enough, it could be heard anywhere. Yes, I had a problem, too. But I stayed here and helped your father do what he wanted to do. Perhaps I was wrong. Perhaps you're right. Good night, Judy. Good night. <laughs> Mr. Traveler. Oh, hello. You're up kind of early, ain't you, Miss Judy? What are you doing? Oh, just gathering my belongings. I ain't aiming to steal anything. Don't say that, please. I feel small enough now. You see, I'm sorry for what I said, and I came down to apologize. Oh, you don't have to apologize to me, Miss Judy, but I guess you was right about my button in. I'm afraid my nose is a heap longer than my reason. Well, I thought it was buttoned in, too, when I was angry. But now that I've had a chance to think it over, I think it's pretty swell. I mean, you're trying to help us. And I think it's pretty swell you having backbone enough to admit you was wrong. Then we're friends? Friends. You know, Miss Judy, instead of you and me fighting, we ought to... What's the matter, Miss Judy? I was just watching you sitting there, rocking back and forth in that chair. You see, my father used to rock like that. I knew your father, Miss Judy. You knew him? Long time ago, before he even met your mother. He was my friend. And I owed him an awful lot. And when I heard that... Well, when I heard what happened here, I thought maybe I could help. I didn't have any money, but... Well, anyway, Miss Judy, what I'm trying to tell you is that I don't want you to ever believe that I was just butting in. Why didn't you tell me this before? Well, some people are kind of proud, like you and your mother, for instance. I don't think she'd accept help if she thought it was an obligation. So let's just you and me keep it our secret. Honest, Injun. Honest, Injun. 
Well, now then, that we got the past all straightened out, and since we ain't going to fight no more, I kind of think we ought to let Johnny Daniels in on our truce, too. Well, you'll have to ask him about that. Yeah, I know. You and Johnny don't get along so well together. Uh-uh. Well, I admit he is awful hard to live with. He just keeps quarreling all night long. With you? No, no. It seems like it's more with himself. Why, he don't know more than get to sleep, and he starts calling himself bad names... I declare I wish you could have heard him last night muttering and mumbling. It's all my fault. The people I'm craziest about are treat the worst. First, I thought he's talking about me till he started mumbling something about you, Miss Judy. Of course, I was kind of touched that he'd think so much about you, but I want to tell you night talkers is a whole lot harder to sleep against than just plain snores. He was talking about me? Yep, he sure was. You better think it over, Miss Judy. Where'd you find this thing? Oh, in your daddy's desk. What is it, Johnny? Oh, that's easy enough. It's a complete blueprint for plan for a radio station. A radio station? Gee, what's that thing there? Well, that's the beam tetrode crystal oscillator. Keeps the station in its channel. Well, what are those little bottles? Oh, they're the rectifiers. That sure is a lot of high-sounding equipment. I always thought radio was simple, like turning on a spigot. One little twist and out pours an announcer. Hey, did you ever build one of those radio stations, Johnny? Yeah, a couple. Betty, it's bedtime, son. Ah, oh, gee, Mom. Why, Mr. Traveler, where did you find that blueprint? In Mr. Allen's desk. I hope you don't mind. No, but it certainly brings back memories. That radio station was one of Ben's fondest dreams. He always said, a newspaper is the eyes of the world and the radio its voice. He was trying to have the station financed when... When he was taken sick. I'll answer it, Mother. Evening, Miss Judy. Why, Constable, come in. Evening, Constable. You ain't come about my watch again. No, I gotta speak to Mrs. Allen. You know, Martha, I'd rather slide down a razor blade than have to tell you this, but, well, tomorrow I gotta take out your presses. Take out the what? presses? Yeah, seems like you owe the bank for some print paper and a lot of other things, and, well, I just thought you ought to know they've clamped down on you. They've clamped down? You mean Matt Collins? Listen, every time anything goes wrong, you blame Matt Collins. It isn't Matt. It's the bank. And Matt Collins is the bank, and the city hall, and the whole darn town. And our friend. That's what you think. Now, wait a minute. Arguing ain't gonna do any good. Maybe a lot of this is my fault. I think I ought to get up and see Matt Collins. I think that's the most sensible thing I've heard around here in weeks. Well, you better leave your hat and coat here when you go to see him, or you'll sure come back without him. Good night, Mrs. Allen. Well, I'm mighty sorry I had to upset you so, Martha. But, well, good night. Good night. You know, Miss Allen, I don't want you to think I was snooping in Mr. Allen's desk. I know you weren't, Traveler. No, ma'am, I wasn't snooping. I was just downright ferreting. What? I don't understand. Well, I've been thinking about one time I set 17 gopher traps. I gathered up 16 of them and I forgot all about the other one till got to smelling something kind of strong around the place. Then I followed my nose. What in the world are you talking about? That blueprint. I stuck it up on the wall there just hoping it might jog your memory. And it did. But what has the blueprint to do with all this? Maybe nothing, maybe plenty. Personally, I think it's plenty. Now, how far did Mr. Allen get with his radio scheme? He had everything about ready to start. You mean equipment and all? No, he didn't get that far. He was trying to get Matt Collins to lend him the money when... And Mr. Collins ain't never mentioned that radio station since then, has he? No, and so many things have happened, I forgot all about it. Which was just what Mr. Collins wanted you to do. If he didn't, he'd have reminded you about it a long time ago. But listen, don't you think you're laying bricks without mortar? No, Miss Judy. You know, you gave the nail a pretty good lick when you asked why Matt Collins wanted the record when he could start a paper of his own if he'd a mind to. But he wouldn't have the newspaper wire service. We have the franchise for that. And you got a franchise for a radio station, too. Here's the government license. Oh, but that's expired, hasn't it? It ain't expired yet, Miss Allen, and that's our gopher trap. Now, the record could have helped a heap in this coming election, but the record with a radio station, why, that's the eyes and ears Mr. Allen always talked about. But the election is only a week from Friday. And and... if you suspend publication, the radio franchise goes back to the government. That's when Mr. Collins puts in his little application. 
Now, when you wouldn't sell him the record, he started pushing it into its grave inch by inch. And the last shove he gave it was when he got all the merchants to take their ads out of the anniversary number. Oh, it all makes sense, but it's hard to believe. People don't do such things. Well, I'd hate to be the one to spoil your faith in human nature, but just like you say, it all makes sense. But what on earth are we going to do? We can't build a radio station in a week. We haven't any equipment. Yep, it sure looks bad, Miss Judy. Traveler, you were going up to see Matt Collins tomorrow. Suppose you put it right up to him, the way you gave it to us. What would happen? Well, ma'am, I don't know, but when a man's caught coming out of a chicken house all covered with feathers and a hen under his coat, he usually pleads guilty. You're a pretty shrewd fellow, Mr. Traveler. I'll admit I wanted that franchise. But knowing my plans doesn't make your position any better, does it? No, it don't. Well, Mr. Collins, I guess I'll say goodbye. I reckon it won't be troubling you no longer. You mean you're leaving the record? That's right, Mr. Collins. Even a rat got sense enough to leave a sinking ship. And these days, a fellow like me's got to look out for himself. You're planning to leave town? Well, not exactly, but I've been thinking I might leave if I could go in business for myself. Not around here? Well, no. You see, when I was coming through, I stopped off in the town where they got a cotton gin and... Knowing a little about it, I thought I'd like to go in the cotton gin business. Where is this place? Oh, about 200 miles down the road. But what I had in mind, Mr. Collins, was if, if I could get a motor and a small generator or something like that. And Well, I know you got a lot of machinery laying around you ain't using, and I thought maybe you could stake me. Yes, and uh, what do I get out of all this? Well, first, you get rid of me. I got what I guess you'd call a nuisance value. <laughs> I'll admit things might have been smoother for some people if you hadn't stopped off here. And they'll be a heap smoother if we move along. All right, Traveler, we've made a deal. I'll see that you get that motor and generator. You know, sometimes I envy you your long trips. Thank you, Mr. Collins. And, Mr. Collins, I wish you'd sort of say goodbye to the Allens for me. I just haven't got the gumption to do it myself. Sure, I'll be glad to. I'll take care of everything. Goodbye and good luck. So long, Mr. Collins, and good luck to you, too. We've heard the second act of The Arkansas Traveler. Bob Burns, Faye Bainter, Gene Parker, and Dickie Moore bring us Act Three after our brief intermission. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Before Mr. DeMille introduces our guest of the evening, may I say just one word about our product. Every day, more and more women are discovering that it pays to follow Hollywood's tip, pays to use Lux toilet soap regularly. Nine out of ten screen stars use Lux toilet soap because it has active lather. If you haven't tried Lux toilet soap, won't you do so tomorrow? Mr. DeMille. Since colonial times, the voice of America has been the rhythmic clatter of her printing presses. And nowhere has that voice rung clearer in the cause of truth and justice than in our small towns. So we thought it particularly fitting that tonight's guest should come from Van Buren, Arkansas, the hometown that gave us Bob Burns. Bob has brought Van Buren into national limelight with his humor. But Van Buren has a serious side, too. And best qualified to represent it is Mr. Hugh Park, editor and publisher of the Van Buren Press Argus who speaks to us now from Arkansas, Hugh Park. First off, Mr. DeMille, I'd like to tell you something about Van Buren. We're a pretty old town, more than 100 years old, I guess, and we took our name from the 8th president of the United States, who also happened to come from a small town. There are 5,182 people in Van Buren. Some of us have got a bit of money, and some of us could stand a bit more. Most of us, though, managed to get by all right. Up the road toward our suburb, Logtown, is the office of the Press Argus where I work and my friend Flo. Now, when you think of all the newspapers there are in the country, the Van Buren Press Argus doesn't amount to a hill of beans. 
But we try to do what every newspaper, big or small, should do. Print news truthfully, give both sides of a question, and serve the people of our community with what they have a right to expect from a newspaper. A paper that's run solely to make money is fit for only one thing, to start a fire in the stove. If there's something being stirred up in Van Buren that folks don't know about, it's up to me to tell them. Not just me, but country editors like me and towns like Van Buren throughout the land. And that's not all either. We want to know how we stand on national problems. And once we've made up our minds, we want to do our best to see that our side wins. And so the country paper is a clearinghouse to inform, to clarify, and to take a stand. A lot of people think that a nation consists of a lot of big cities surrounded by little towns where folks can stop to get gas, but I don't think so. 25 out of 32 presidents have gone into the White House from hometown no bigger than Van Buren. And country folks have produced men like Mark Twain and Thomas Edison, like Rockefeller and Pershing. And I guess we've contributed more jokes about ourselves than all the big cities put together. We don't mind being joked about. I think it's mighty fine when a small town can make a man laugh because some of those big cities can make a man cry pretty quick. Yes, I'm a newspaper man, but I also know what an important force radio is in our country. You can't imagine, Mr. DeMille, what it means to us who live in small towns to have the Lux Radio Theater brought to us in such a fine way. You talk a lot about the big movie stars using Lux soap. Well, I want you to know that throughout all America, you'll find plenty of fine-looking young women, nice enough for any camera, using Lux soap, too. I know because we've got plenty of them in, right in Van Buren. And now, before I start selling my hometown too hard, I guess I better stop talking and listen some more to Van Buren's most famous citizen, Bob Burns. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Park. And incidentally, we'll take all the citizens like Bob Burns you can send us. Back now in Hollywood, we raise the curtain for Act Three of The Arkansas Traveler, starring Bob Burns and Faye Bainter with Gene Parker and Dickie Moore. Almost a week has passed since the traveler disappeared so mysteriously. The Allens, hurt and shocked by his apparent desertion, have been forced to give up the newspaper. But now the traveler has returned. Little Benny, on his way home from fishing, spies him coming down the road. The boy tries to avoid the meeting, but the traveler's long legs soon overtake him. Hey, Benny! Benny, wait! Oh, hello, Benny. My, I'm sure glad to see you. I've been gone most a week now, and I was getting awful lonesome. How are things at home? What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Oh, you know, Benny, it's no use being mad at me because it didn't say goodbye. Ain't no use saying goodbye when you know you're coming right back quick, is it? Of course, I don't have to tell you all this. I know you understand because you're my friend. Oh, come on, Benny. You, you can't go on not talking this way. I'd sure like to feel you ain't mad at me. Hey, Benny, Benny, where are you going? Hey, Benny! Hello, Johnny. Gosh, it's good to be back. Say, has the cat got your tongue, too? How's the folks? You ought to know. Hasn't Matt Collins told you? Say, what are you talking about? I haven't seen Matt Collins in almost a week. What did he send you back for this time? Now, look, Johnny, you got this thing all wrong. I saw Matt Collins because Because I... your job was finished and he wanted to pay you off. Now, wait a minute, Johnny. There's not much time to explain, but... Now, what is there to explain? How you found out all about us from Matt Collins and then walked in here pretending to be our friend while you were doing what he wanted you to do? Now, hold on a minute, Johnny. You heard what I said. Now, get out of here before I throw you out. Now, look, Johnny, when this is all over, I just want you to remember one thing. I wasn't mad. I was just in a hurry. I'm sorry, Johnny. So you see, Johnny, I just had to do it. Oh, you shouldn't... Shouldn't have hit me with your fist. You should have used a brick. Oh, I think all of us deserve... We deserve a good kick in the pants. We didn't understand, Mr. Traveler. Now, now let me get this straight. You say you have a generator? And wires and a motor and almost everything. Enough to build a radio station and right quick too before that franchise expires well, what are we going to do for help we we can't build it alone we've got to have men lots of men i'll help well, where are we going to get them 
You know, Matt Collins controls every mechanic and laborer in this town. I've been thinking of that, too. Yeah, but well, what are we going to do about it? Hello. Give me the telegraph office, will you, sister? Down at the railroad station, yeah. Well, what's that for? I think I can scare up a friend or two to kind of help out. Oh, hello, Joe. This is a traveler, Joe. Say, I want you to send a message for me, will you? Send it to all the engineers and brakemen on the line. Just say, tell all the hobos you meet the traveler needs help. Come tonight on number nine. Traveler needs help. Tell all the bows. Traveler needs help. We're on our way, bows. We're going to build a station. A railroad station? No, a radio station. Tell all the bows. Get them all. Get them all. Every hobo on the line. The traveler needs us, boys. Come on. Tom, bring her up easy. Oh, it's going up, traveler. We'll get that station built yet. I reckon you will, Johnny, at the rate you're going now. Hey, hey, watch that beam over there. There he is, Matt. Hello, Mr. Traveler. Oh, hello, Mr. Collins. Hello there, Mr. Mayor. I suppose you boys are looking for me. Not exactly, but if you can't explain a few things, the constable will be looking for you. Well, maybe we ought to talk things over, Mr. Collins. Yes, maybe. You obtained a generator and other equipment for me under false pretenses. Now, just a minute, Mr. Collins. I don't think there's any law against a man changing his mind. I did think I might go into the cotton gin business till all this come along. I don't see why we should waste any time, Matt. As mayor of this city, I'll issue an order instructing the constable to arrest all these men as vagrants and undesirables. You can't run in a filthy lot of tramps and moochers on this town. Now, wait a minute. Just because a fella can't get a job, no reason call him all the names you're using. There's a lot of people these days, Mr. Mayor, who just ache into work. And they travel far and wide to find it. You can't condemn a man because luck and circumstances are against him. Most of those boys out there are pretty good fellas, Mr. Mayor. But I'd hate to think of them chasing after you if they knew what you'd call them. So if you'd like to stand up right now and make a speech, well, go ahead. But if you don't, then suppose you just get back and give the boys a little elbow room. We got to have this station ready bright and early in the morning. No speech? Well, so long, Mr. Collins. I hate to rush you, Johnny, but we ain't got much time. How's it coming? Oh, I don't know. It, it should work. Here, here, wait a minute. This ought to do it. You better go downstairs and listen in on the receiving set. Too. All right, and set the dial at 9.30 kilocycles and let me know the minute something comes through. Uh, maybe if you turn this thing, Johnny. Oh, no, 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 Judy. This has nothing to do with it now. I don't hear a thing. That dial set at 9.30? Right on the mark. What's that? Well, if that's Johnny, something sure happened to his voice between upstairs and here. Just dandy. Oh, I turned out to be a first-class unadulterated flop. Listen, it's working. Don't worry about it, Johnny. Even if the radio doesn't work, it won't make any difference to me. It's working. They're broadcasting right now. I knew we'd do it. I'm going upstairs and tell them it's working. Now, wait a minute, Bennett. What's going on now just as important as a radio station? Let them work out the future. Nothing can make any difference to me, John. I hope after we get married, you won't throw this up to me every time we have a little argument. Why? Well, what do you mean? Well, you probably tell me what a dud I am not getting the radio station to work. Why, Johnny Daniels, I don't think you're a bit fat. You don't give me credit for any sense at all. Oh, I give you credit for falling in love with me. I'm commencing to wonder if I made a mistake. Well, of course, there's still time to correct it. And that's just what I intend to do. I love you, Johnny Daniels, even if it is a mistake. And I love you, and it isn't. Oh, John. Well, uh, I guess it's settled now. We can tell them now, I guess. Oh, what? It's working, and should your faces be red? Woo! You mean to tell me that all the people who are listening in heard everything we said? Well, why, sure. I don't care, do you? No! I could shout it from the house. <laughs> well, you shouted it over the air, and in my opinion, it's the swellest way I know of to start off a radio station. Now, Johnny, you get in there again and just kind of tell these folks how you feel about things. Of course, I wouldn't go calling no names or nothing, but... You just might slip in a mention of a polecat without calling him Matt Collins. You... And that's what the bear trap damn bond issue is about, ladies and gentlemen. A vote for my father is a vote for Matt Collins' scheme to develop his personal property with your money. 
manufacture electricity, and then sell it back to you. In other words, to get you coming or going. But you don't have to be told how to think and vote. Just think right and vote right. Oh, Johnny, Johnny that was well. Shh, we're still on the air. Folks, after Johnny's speech, there ain't much left to say except he forgot a very important point. Now, Homer Daniels is the only one running for mayor. If you don't vote for him, you'll be without a mayor, and if you do vote for him, you'll still be without one. Of course, that won't be so good. Personally, I think you ought to have somebody you've known a long time, somebody you can trust, and who'll be for you instead of for Matt Collins. So what's the matter with electing Johnny? Oh, no, no, listen. He's honest, and he loves this town, and as you heard over the radio, he's going to get married and settle down and, I suppose, raise things like you folks do. And So how about scratching out the name of Homer and writing in the name Johnny? Just put a cross in the usual place, and you'll be getting yourself a Daniels, but a whole lot better one than you ever had before. Johnny Daniels. That's my vote. Fine ball. Elect Johnny Daniels. Daniels for mayor. But don't forget, Johnny. Well, it's over. He's elected, Traveler. The new mayor. You must be all wore up, Miss Allen. Why don't you lie down and rest? I'm not tired. I just want to relax for a moment. Then I guess you'd rather be alone. Please don't go. I've got a lot of things to say to you, Traveler. Well, if you want to thank me, Miss Allen, you don't have to do that. I know how you feel. I'm afraid you don't. I don't believe you realize what you've done for us. You'll never know what you've done for me. Oh, well, now, Miss Allen, well, Sometimes I'd... I wonder what might have happened if you hadn't come along. I was foolish enough to believe I could carry on alone. But running a newspaper is a man-sized job. And trying to make a home for the children is just about all I can do. Well, you won't have to worry about Judy, Miss Allen. Johnny's a fine boy. Yes, I know that, Traveler. But Benny's at the age when he needs a man's guidance, and you can give him that. He adores you. You've been like a father to him and to Judy. It's been more like a family with you here, and... Well, I'd like you to stay on, Traveler. Well, Miss Allen, that's awful nice of you to say all those things, but... But what? Well, can I... Can I give you the answer in the morning? Yes, Traveler, if you're here in the morning. Well, I'm awfully sorry, Miss Allen. Good night, ma'am. Goodbye, Traveler. Mom! Hey, Mom! Johnny's making another speech. Hey, where's the Traveler? He's gone, Benny. Gone? You mean gone for good? Yes, for good. Ah, oh, gee. No. Traveler! Traveler! Traveler, wait! Wait for me! Gosh, Traveler, you can't leave this way. What are we going to do without you? What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Oh, I don't want you to go, Traveler. Please come back. All right, if you won't stay, then I'm going with you. Look, Benny, you don't want to be like me. I'm just a rolling stone. There's no fun not being able to stay put. Always wanting to be on the move, first one place and then another. Well, if it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. Oh, no, it ain't, Benny. You belong here. Little fellas like you, when they grow up, is what makes small towns big. Well, you might even get to be mayor someday, just like Johnny. I don't want to be mayor. Well, then you might get to be president. Ain't eh? Blinken did it. Well, go on now. Rem uh, Johnny, remember what I told you now. Take care of your mom and be a good boy. Hey, stop there. Stay right where you are. Why? Well, what's the matter, Constable? You come along with me, traveler. You're going right back to town. And if you ever try to leave again, I'll put you right in the jug. What? What's the big idea? You're staying with us a long time, Mr. Traveler. You see, Johnny Daniels says you stole his watch. Time now for the Arkansas Traveler to travel once again. This time, back to our microphone. And with him, Faye Bainter, Gene Parker, and... Uh, uh, uh... <laughs> 
Bob, if you just put half the effort into chopping kidneys that you put into blowing that backwoods bagpipe, you'd really have something at the end of the day. Instead of just a lot of broken down echoes. Well, now, Faye, you and Jean may be right, but I don't know. I think everybody should have some kind of relaxation. Of course, this happens to be mine, playing this bazooka. You know, some folks like to collect matchboxes or mount butterflies. And there's one actress I know who gets her relaxation from farming. She's right here in Hollywood, but her farm's 3,000 miles away in New York State. Now, if that ain't silly. All right, Bob, all right. So I'm guilty. I'll admit there's not much sense farming by remote control, but it's rather a comforting thought, my good man, to know the farm's there waiting for me should I ever have the chance to get away and relax. Well, when it comes to relaxation, this hard-working actress, in case anyone's interested, is practical. Believe it or not, I get a lot of comfort just from bathing. I, I don't mean the swimming pools of the Pacific Ocean. I mean the good old-fashioned bathtub. <laughs> Incidentally, Mr. DeMille, you'll be glad to know that I like Lux soap. Just as much for bathing as I do for my complexion. Well, Jean, you are certainly practical. And I must admit, I agree with you. <laughs> your, your double tribute, ladies, is doubly appreciated. Well, now, speaking of relaxation, the man who taught me to relax was my Uncle Gus Rooks. <laughs> Honestly, I guess my Uncle Gus Rooks was the greatest fisherman Van Buren ever had. Well, not long ago when he was out here, he caught a fish weighing 640 pounds. He'd have won the first prize at Catalina if he'd just known the rules, but you see, they got a rule over there. You can't use a line of over a 27-pound breaking strength, you know. Well, what kind of line did your Uncle Gus use? Oh, just ordinary wrapping twine. But you can break wrapping twine with a two-pound pull, Bob. Well, I know, but they disqualified Uncle Gus because he caught the fish on a bent pin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe the pin was bent, Bob. Like the story, I think it was just a little uh, distorted. Well, maybe you're right, Mr. DeMille, but before I go, I sure want to thank you, Mr. DeMille, for putting editor Hugh Park on the show tonight. I think he's about the most wide awake and progressive editor I ever saw. Why, he gave me my first job down there. I was used to be office boy for him. And I remember one time a man come there looking for a job, and I went to the door and and uh, the man said he hadn't had anything to eat in six days. And I went and told Hugh Park. I says, the man out there says he hasn't had anything to eat in six days. Hugh Park says, well, bring him in here right away. If we can find out how he does it, we can run this paper another week. Oh, all right, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, wait Good for me, girls. Good night, Miss Bainter. Jane, so long, traveler. Don't miss the exciting news about next week's program that Mr. DeMille reveals in just a moment. The part of Johnny Daniels was played by James Eagles. Bob Burns appeared through courtesy of the Kraft Phoenix Cheese Company. Faye Bainter stars soon in the Columbia film Old Lady Leonard and Her Machine Guns. And in the Warner picture, Yes, My Darling Daughter. Gene Parker's new Columbia film is Romance of the Redwoods. Louis Silvers appeared through courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studio, where he directed music for the picture Jesse James. Now, your producer... Few plays in the history of the American theater have contributed so much to entertainment on both stage and screen as the melodramatic classic that awaits you next Monday night. It's The Count of Monte Cristo, the amazing story of Edmund Dantes, who, arrested on the day of his engagement, escapes from prison years later and dedicates his life to righting the wrongs that were done him. Filling the powerful role of Dantes, you'll hear one of the screen's most versatile and popular performers, Robert Montgomery. Co-starred that splendid artist, Miss Josephine Hutchinson. And with them, Louis Stone, Lloyd Nolan, Paul Lucas, and Joseph Schulkraut. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Robert Montgomery and Josephine Hutchinson in The Count of Monte Cristo with Louis Stone, Lloyd Nolan, Paul Lucas, and Joseph Schulkraut. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Also heard in the Arkansas Traveler were Frank Nelson as Matt, Eddie Waller as Constable, Earl Ross as Trainman, and Harry Humphrey as Homer Daniels. Your announcer has been Melville Roy. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.